Okay, so today I want to do a little uh, update on my Gerson. Uh This is uh, imported by Zenith Arms. Uh, this is the, I think it's the MC1911C, which is the commander size. Um, basically, the only thing I've changed on this gun, well, I started off when I first got the gun, I did a video uh, at the range, and the problem with the gun was that uh, it was failing, it was, it was, Every time the slide came back, somehow or another, the slide stop was actually keeping the, uh, was popping up. And that was causing the gun to, the slide to lock back after every round. Now, there was a couple reasons I thought it was. Um, I thought the gun was way uh, undersprung, um, which I still think it is. But um, I've fixed the problem. So what I wanted to show you, what I've done today um, with some of the things I've done to this gun. So let me uh, cut this right here. I'm going to take apart the gun real quick and I'll get right back. Uh, I figured I might as well just show you the disassembly real quick and how I disassemble my 1911s. Um, and that way, if you have anybody has any questions, you know, they'll know how to do it. So for me, I uh, cock the gun back. I usually put the gun on safe. That keeps the slide from going. I use my, uh, my 1911 takedown tool. For this gun, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to twist the bushing. I twist it just a little bit. That way I can catch it and take it off the rest of the way with my finger. Pull out the stock recoil spring there. Um, this is the stock one, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. I went with, uh, I bought a wolf spring kit for the gun, um, but the gun actually didn't like the stock 18 pound commander spring so um, I put the stock spring back in so what I do now is I take the gun back off safe line up the little notch pop the pin slide the slide off so what we're going to talk about now is what I did to make this gun reliable and it wasn't a whole lot first thing I did was the actual slide stop itself um, was very, very, uh, it's got a nice finish over it, but the back over here was actually kind of rough, the back side. I don't know if you can see the back side right there. But what I've done is I've polished that, and then what I also did is where the little detent here, um, I don't know if you can see the little detent, where that interacts with the slide stop, what I did was I took a um, powered spring punch and I punched right exactly, I don't know if you can see this, right exactly where that goes. Now this just puts a little detent, this is for like drilling, um, but it put just enough of a little detent and then I finished polishing this piece and got really nice and smooth like glass. So the little detent in the gun actually just barely locks into that. And then let me put it in here. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it, but so let's see. You hear it? Again, I'm going to do it real quiet. And you can hear it actually notched down into that place. So by doing that, it gives it a little more positive um, lock. Now, what I found was that when I used the um, Wolf 18-pound spring, um, for some reason, the gun would not lock back. It didn't matter whether I was using the factory um, Act mags that came with the gun. And actually, I tried these uh, magazines in my STI, which is what this, I bought this gun to make it a clone of this gun, um, and this STI. Now these magazines actually worked really good in the STI, but they did not work that well in the Garcon. Um, so I went with, again, my Wilson mags, and, uh, what I did was, like I said, I put that little intent there, and then I also bought a set of Wilson shock buffs. Now these are the uh, 1911 package of six. They're like six dollars. So with the spring and the shock buffs, it was like 25 bucks. 
So I just put a shock buff in here right by the uh, the recoil, uh, the, re the full length guide rod. And with that, and that little detent put in there, like I said, again, I don't know if you can see that. The gun functioned flawlessly. I fired about 100 rounds through it of uh, Seller and Bella 230 grain ball ammo. Um, I didn't try any defense ammo in it. Um, but then again, this is not going to be my defense gun. This is basically this uh, STI, and this one is loaded, by the way. Um, this is my carry gun. But it is an aluminum frame. This gun only weighs 28 ounces or 27 ounces without a magazine. So it's a very light 1911. Very beautiful gun, very easy to shoot. But I don't want to shoot this one in competition, but I want to get competent with the same form factor, and that's why I got the Garcon. Um, but I mean, this gun is flawless from the factory. Um, I did have to send it back because of the sights, but they sent me better sights. Uh, everything else. I can't complain about this gun at all. I love this gun. Um, so that being said, um, that was the whole reason for the Garçon. The only other concern I have is the little area where the detent, the detent housing, I want to say, was what they call it, where the detent rides for the safety and the, uh, mat, the slide stop. This housing actually seems to be loose. And um, by, you can't really see it inside. It's just basically detented inside. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to tighten that. It hasn't become an issue, but uh, it might further down the line depending on, you know, I plan on putting a lot of rounds to this gun because this is going to be my IDPA gun. Um, so we'll see. But again, um, let's put it back together real quick. So we've got our... Uh, new recoil buff in there with our new uh with our side stop and i always just line it up like that first throw it in there then i move it back then i put it on safe so nothing moves recoil spring and the cap, put it in there, and I turn it and just catch the edge, and then I use my tool to finish it off. You don't have to use a tool, but I just find that it makes it so much easier. Okay, functions check works good. Again, I still think with the factory spring for 45, it's really, to me, it feels really loose. Uh, or not loose, but it feels like too light of a spring. But again, with the shock buff in there and everything else, it does shoot 100%. Um, so that little bit of work I've had to do for a $400 and $450 gun, I'm not really too upset. Uh, like I said, 1911s, um, especially cheap 1911s, aren't known to be the most reliable guns. But, hey, uh, 100 rounds, not one hiccup. Uh uh, that's enough for me to start actually shooting in an IDPA and see how it works. And uh, maybe the next IDPA video, if I don't drop my gun, I won't get disqualified. Um, I might shoot this gun, and I probably will on this month's IDPA. So look forward to the uh, the next video this month. Should be IDPA video. Um, and hopefully, like I said, I won't drop my gun. So uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.